This is Matt Wimmer from Brody Precision. In this video, we're going to be taking a quick look at a really common issue when it comes to setting up IP devices and IP networking, and that is the conflict of IP addresses and subnets. So uh, I think it's really intuitive to know that you can't have uh, multiple devices on the same network with uh, overlapping IP addresses. Uh, this is really easily diagnosed. Um, and it's really easy to uh, determine this ahead of time. Uh, you can ping an IP address. You can open up that IP address in a browser when you're connected to the network and see if a device is living on that IP address before you plug your device in uh, using that IP address. Where this gets really more com really complicated and less intuitive is when you start using VPNs. Uh, because there's the possibility for your local network and the remote network that you're connecting to to have overlapping addresses or subnets. The reason this is sort of unintuitive is because when you're setting up that remote device or network, uh, in our case it's typically you know a, a job site, um, you're not thinking about the IP addresses of the devices that are going to be connecting to that network potentially in the future. Uh, one of the nice things that we really like about the Tazi Box product is that it'll warn or alert you uh, when you go to connect to a site and it determines that your local network and that remote network have overlaps of any kind. So uh, visually, what we're talking about here is I've got my laptop here, say at home, and I've got sort of the typical home network IP address scheme, which is this 1.1 uh, subnet. And I'm connecting with my uh, key here uh, to my lock at the site. And that's also using the sort of typical uh, 192.168.1 subnet with a JACE underneath. When I go to connect to that JACE from Workbench on this laptop, my computer has a decision to make. Does it go through the TaziBox connection to connect to that JACE? Or does it go through my local network, which also meets the criteria for that IP address? Uh, this is where you'll get sort of unexpected behavior, especially if you have a device on your local network at .20. Uh, your computer doesn't know what to do. And sometimes, you know, it'll go one place and then other times it'll go to the other. So an easy way to get around this and solve this problem is uh, think ahead, number one. And number two, uh, use the default uh, IP addressing schemes that are built into a TaziBox lock out of the box. These are pseudo-random, and they've sort of taken this uh, overlap concept into consideration when they were setting up the product so that your likelihood of running into overlapping remote networks and local networks is much, much lower. Doesn't mean it's impossible, but it's much, much lower. Other thing to note is that we have a very large number of IP addresses and subnets that we can use uh, for our networks out in the field. We have uh, three classes of IP addresses uh, that are, are specifically marked for just local area networks. They can't be used out on the internet as a whole, so we know that they're safe to use on our local networks. Obviously, this class C... Um, much less uh, uh, uncommon, so it's much more common to see, as I was showing in our example. Uh, and what you'll find out of the box for the TaziBox product is more likely to be in this class A, and it's going to be sort of some odd numbers uh, for our uh, couple of our octets in there. So, uh, as an example of this, we're keeping our, our local um, home network IP addressing the same. And now we're using sort of the out-of-the-box uh, IP addressing and subnet setup on our site side. And we've just changed our JACE so that it matches that uh, subnet. And now when we go to connect to the lock there's no conflicts anywhere. So our computer knows exactly where to go to send the traffic. It's going to go over that TaziBox connection, and it's going to connect to our JACE without an issue. And we're not going to run into any uh, error messages or anything like that within the key software on our laptop either. 
So hopefully uh, that's helpful and straightforward. It's uh, something just to keep in mind as you're designing networks and you're setting up networks and you're setting up uh, your devices. Just because this JACE comes out of the box at a 192.168 IP address doesn't mean that you should keep it there. It makes much more sense to to get it to match with uh, the lock uh, that you may be using on the site as well. So hope that's helpful, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.